I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright and I am here with, thank God it's Friday, super millennial David Barreto. How you doing, Big Dave? It's Friday. It's Friday. So... This week, our topic has been on rebuilding. Motivational Monday, we discussed moving out of conflict. We had a great interview this last Tuesday during Health Huddles with Dr. Tom. Wednesday's Meeting of the Minds, we talked about momentum. And yesterday's Connection Thursday, we talked about the difference between faith and hope and connecting faith. And today, we are going to continue our book study of Osho's book, Emotional Wellness. And we are, on, we are starting a new section, From Fear to Love. Before we get started, quick announcements. November 3rd and 4th is coming up next week. We are going to have the Awaken Connections event. Next week's podcast, we're going to dedicate to Awaken Connections, and each day we're going to pick one of the life categories, and we're going to focus our podcast on that. Just so you know, the temperatures are going to be high of 79, low of 60. So those that are in the snow and ice, come on down where it's nice. Yeah, if anything, come down for the weather. <laughs> <laughs> a heck with the event. Come down for the weather. So we're starting the section from fear to love. And Osho begins. Just look at the absurdity of people's questions. How to love, how to dance, how to meditate, how to live. Absurd questions. But they show the poverty, the inner poverty of man. He has been postponing everything, and by and by, he has forgotten. Every child knows how to love. Every child knows how to dance. Every child knows how to live. Every child comes complete with everything ready. One just has to start living. Have you seen? If you are crying and a small child is watching, he will come near you. He cannot say much. He cannot argue you out of your crying, but he puts his hands on your hand. Have you ever felt the touch? Never again will anybody touch you like that child can touch. He knows how to touch. Later on, people are simply cold and hard. They touch, but nothing flows from their hands. When a child touches you, that tenderness of it, the softness of it, the message, he pours his whole being into it. So remember, we talk about when children are born, you're born into that high spiritual energy of theta. That's what stress mastery is. We're trying to get you as an adult to that energy. But children are born in this energy. They understand love. After age seven, we get kind of programmed and then we're told what love is. We're programmed what love is. We're commercialized what love is, but we forget what love is. We truly do. So Osho continue. Anyone add to that? That just reminds me of if anybody went to uh, the Break Free event in Minnesota, uh, okay. the little baby that was there, everyone laughed at a joke and the baby laughed and the baby doesn't know it's funny. The baby just knows the energy in the room is like, wow, everyone's enjoying this. That was the little guru. Yeah, that, was, I, that little incredible. guru was awesome, man. <laughs> so he continu Osho continues, never again will anybody touch you like that child can touch you. And everybody is born with everything they need to live. The more you live, the more capable you become of life. That is the reward. The less you live, the less capable you are. That is the punishment. The wholeness you have to seek is within you. You have to watch your life moment to moment and drop all that seems to be momentary, fragmentary. It may be very exciting, but futile in the end. Drop it. Look deep into those moments that may not be so exciting. The, ex the, the eternal cannot be exciting because that which has to be forever and ever has to be very silent 
peaceful. Blissful, of course, but not exciting. Deeply blissful, but with no noise around it. More like a silence than like a sound. You will have to grow in awareness so you can sort it out. So one of the things I will add to this is as one practices stress mastery and they're working, especially in shift coaching, as one shifts, they begin to let go of the their identity. The identity is the ego. And they start to let go of these limiting beliefs. And what happens is, as they start to let go, this heaviness leaves their life and peace starts to take over. When you really start to shift and you get way up and near that those theta levels, I actually have a few clients doing that right now. I had one last week who had an amazing transformation in, in what she was doing and she could actually see what it was like to live in theta and how her life went. But what you realize is there's no more good, there's no more bad. That's when peace starts to take over. That's what Osho is teaching here. And he, anything you want to add to that? Nope. You understand? No. Nope. <laughs> You've been quiet all week. So Osho continues. Fear is a part of your intelligence. Nothing is wrong in it. Fear simply shows there is death. And we human beings are only here for a few moments. That trembling says that we are not going to be permanently here. We are not eternally here. A few days more and you'll be gone. In fact, it is because of fear that human beings have been in deep search of what it means to be religious. Otherwise, there would have been no point. No animal is religious because no animal is in fear. No animal can be religious because no animal can be aware of death. Human beings are aware of death. Every moment, death is there, surrounds you from everywhere. Any moment, you will be gone. That gives you a trembling. Why be embarrassed? Tremble. But again, the ego says, no. You and afraid. No, this is not for you. This is for cowards. You are brave man. In other words, we always tell ourselves not to be afraid. And he said that back a couple weeks ago, we talked about that. You have to experience fear. It's there. So he continues, it is not for cowards. Allow it. Allow fear. Only one thing is to be understood. And that is when you allow fear and you tremble, watch it. Enjoy it. In that watching, you will transcend it. You will see the body is trembling. You will see the mind is trembling. But you will come to feel a point within you, a deep center that remains unaffected. The storm passes by, but somewhere deep within you is a center that is untouched, the center of the cyclone. Allow fear. Don't fight it. Watch it. What is happening? Go on watching. As you're watching, I becomes more penetrating and intense. The body will be trembling. The mind will be trembling. But deep within you will be a consciousness that is simply a witness that only watches. It remains untouched like a lotus flower in the water. Only when you attain to that will you attain to fearlessness. But that fearlessness is not being afraid, unafraid. That fearlessness is not bravery. That fearlessness is a realization that you are too a part of you will die. A part of you will be internal. That part that is going to die is going to remain always afraid. And that part that is not going to die, which is immortal, for it, for it there is no point in being afraid. Then a deep harmony, har, 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 I got it guys, don't worry. Then a deep harmony exits exists. Well, geez, Bill, let's get this together. Bill's on a roll today, right? Too many tongue twisters. <laughs> then a deep harmony exists. You can use fear for meditation. Use all that you have for meditation so that you go beyond. So really, if you, if one of the things that we also teach is that our true fear of death is not fear of the physical death. Our fear of death is the fear of the death of the identity. It's really the death of the ego. That's what we're afraid of. And it's kind of a, it's a kind of a strange fear if you think about it because it's inevitable. 
You go, you know, you know the super millennial, you're going to go, right? Uh, yep. You keep screwing around. You might go faster <laughs> than you think, buddy. <laughs> okay, so here's a question. So this is a question that is posed to Osho. The strongest emotion that I have is hating death. I want to kill it once and for all. And Osho answers. Well, <laughs> you just know, right? Osho answers. To hate death is to hate life. They are not separate. They cannot be separated. Death and life exist together. There is no way to separate them. The separation is just an abstraction in the mind. It is utterly false. Life implies death. Death implies life. They are polar opposites, but complementary to each other. Death is the pinnacle of life. If you hate death, how can you love life? And it's a great misunderstanding. People who think they love life always hate death. And by hating death, they become incapable of living. The capacity to live, the capacity to live at the maximum comes only when you are ready to die and ready to die at the maximum. It is always proportionate. If you live in a lukewarm way, you will die in a lukewarm way. If you live intensely, totally, dangerously, you will also die in a deep orgasm. Death is a crescendo. Life comes to its peak in death. The orgasm that you know through love is nothing compared to the orgasm that death makes available. All joys of life simply are pale compared to the joy that death brings. What exactly is death? Death is the disappearance of the false entity in you, the ego. Death also happens in love on a smaller scale in partial way, hence the beauty of love. For a moment, you die. For a moment, you disappear. For a moment, you are no more and the whole possesses you. You disappear as a part. You become rhythmic with the whole and you don't exist as a ripple in the ocean. You exist as the ocean itself. That's why all orgasmic experiences are oceanic experiences. The same happens in deep sleep. The ego disappears. The mind functions no more. You relapse into the original joy. But these are nothing compared to death. These are partial things. Sleep is a very tiny death. Each morning, you will be awake again. Still, if you have slept deeply, the joy lingers on the whole day. A certain quality of tranquility continues deep in your heart. You live differently that day. When you have slept well, you live differently. If you have not been able to sleep well, the day is disturbed. You feel annoyed, irritated for no reason at all. Small things become great disturbances. You are angry. Not at anybody in particular, you are simply angry. Your energy is not at home. It is distracted. You feel uprooted. True? Very true. Right? <laughs> I never, you know, he puts it, he's got, a, he's got a way of putting it. When you don't sleep right. The whole a, day is shot. It's a like, whole day. It's a, yeah. Uphill, you fight backwards. It's kind it's of important. Time. So he goes on. Osho continues. Death is a great sleep. The whole turmoil of life. 70, 80, or 90 years turmoil and all the miseries of life and all the excitements and the distractions and the anxiety simply disappear are no longer relevant. You fall back into your original unity of existence. You become part of the earth. Your body disappears into the earth. Your breath disappears into the air. Your fire goes back to the sun. Your water to the oceans. Your inner sky has a meeting with the outer sky. This is death. How can one hate death? You must be carrying a misunderstanding. You must have been carrying the idea that death is the enemy. Death is not the enemy. Death is the greatest friend. Now, I want to just for a second, I will tell you, you're not going to understand this because you're 25. But when you start to hit your 50s and you're nearing 60, you're going towards your 60s like I am, it, life takes a whole different uh, choice in the things that you're going to do from the projects, from the people you want to be with, you realize, wow, I'm on the other side of this game. I'm way on the other side of this game. And you just look at things different. It usually starts, I find it starts usually in our 50s. In our 50s, and a lot of my clients I coach, that's when we sort of want to transition our life. We've done a lot, and we realize, wow, I don't want to do this anymore, I want to do this. You know, you can't, you can't relate to that, correct? In some sense I can. Um... 
especially from some of the conversations we had, it's just, uh, I think a lot of people my age, um, being able to see other people's accomplishments at our age, we think that we're not far enough. And that's where I think the... It's called envy and jealousy. We did a chapter in that. Yeah, well, I think that's why a lot of my generation has anxiety and everyone's depressed. Everyone's depressed. Facebook generation, buddy. Yeah. And I think when people start to take away that advantage of like, I have 40, 50, 60, 70 years left to do this instead of I need it done now. I think people start to take for granted with their life now. And that's and, why a lot and of we re- and we really don't know, right? Exactly. I and that, just and that's the truth. Yeah. That is the truth. You don't know. Believe me, you don't know. So Osho continues. Death has to be welcomed. Death has to be waited for with a loving heart. Why do I feel like this is going to disturb a lot of you out there listening? Probably. Right? I don't mean to disturb you, but everything he's saying is absolutely true. So let me continue. Death has to be welcomed. Death ha- has to Death has to be waited for with a loving heart. If you think of death as the enemy, you will die. Everybody has to die. Your thinking will not make any difference, but you will die in agony because you will be resisting. You will be fighting in resistance, in fight. You will destroy all the joys that death and only death can deliver to you. The death that could have been a great ecstasy will just be an agony and when something is too much of an agony one falls unconscious there is a limit to tolerance one can bear only so much hence 99 out of 100 die in a state of unconsciousness they struggle they fight to the very end and when it becomes impossible to fight anymore they have to put all their energies at stake they fall into the kind of a swoon they die an unconscious death And to die an unconscious death is a great calamity because you will not remember what has happened. You will not remember that death was a door into the divine. You will be carried through the door, but on a stretcher, unconscious. You have missed a great opportunity again. That's why we go on forgetting about our past lives. If you die consciously, you will not forget because there will be no gap. There will be continuity. You will remember your past life, and to remember a past life is a great import. If you can remember your past life, you will not commit the same mistakes again. Otherwise, you will go on moving in vicious circle, the same cycle, the same wheel will move again and again, you will cherish the same ambitions again, and you will commit the same foolishness again. Because you will think that this is the first time you are doing them. You have done them a million times. But each time you die, a gap appeared because you were unconscious. You become discontinuous with your past. Then life starts from A, B, C again. That's why you cannot evolve into Buddhas. Evolution needs a continuous awareness of the past so that the same mistakes are no longer committed. Slowly, mistakes disappear. Slowly, you become aware of the vicious circle. Slowly, you become capable of getting out of it, too. If you die unconsciously, you will be born unconsciously because death is one side of the door, birth is the other side of the same door. From one side, the door says death. The other side says birth. It is the entrance. It is the exit. It is the same door. That's why you were born, but don't remember it. You don't remember those nine months in the womb. You don't remember passing through the birth canal. You don't remember the agony that you went through. You don't remember your birth trauma. And that birth trauma goes on affecting you. Your whole life will remain affected by your birth trauma. That trauma has to be understood. But the only way to understand it is to remember it. And how to remember it? You are so afraid of death. You are so afraid of birth that the very fear prevents you from going into it. Wow, that's some deep stuff. Did you get all that? Yeah, that's... Super Millennial likes this book. So, (laughs) there's more, and he continues. I know that's ruffling some cages out there. Guys, take it with a grain. It's wonderful teachings. But if you think about it, really think about some of the things that he says, right? Do you remember your birth? No. But your subconscious records everything, so it's in there. Some of you understand yeah. that, right? So we don't remember. How, what's what's the earliest you can remember when you go back to? What age do you think? I think it's like it had to be before 
five because I was remember it? New York for sure. So it was like three, maybe. Yeah, I go back to three years old. I can go back to three. It's as far as I think I can go, go back in that. So even that's then, it. that's like a like a dream feeling, like yeah. you know. And yet, it's all Damn. in our mind. <laughs> so Osho continues. You say the strongest emotion that I have is hating death. It is your hating life. Love life and then a natural love for death arises too because it is life that brings death. Death is not against life. Death is the flowering of all that life contains in it as a seed. Death does not come from the blue. It grows in you. It is your flowering, your bloom. Have you ever seen a real man dying? It is very rare to see a real man dying. But if you have, you will be surprised that death makes a person so beautiful. I saw this with my grandfather. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I have never seen somebody so peaceful right before he passed. It was, I, I just, I can't put it into words. He's right. He's right. Have you ever seen anybody pass? No. I it's, think so. when I die, you get to watch. Deal? <laughs> Sure. I'll try not to get an accident, okay? Yeah, I was going to say, don't have yeah. some gruesome right, death. I, I will, I'll try to do it right, okay? <laughs> All right. So, Hosho continues. He has never... This, 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 like, this, like, this got dark. <laughs> Osho continues. He has never been so beautiful before, neither in his childhood, because then he was ignorant, nor in his youth, because then passion was too much of a fever. But when death comes, all is relaxed. It's what he's saying is absolutely true. That's exactly the way it was. The foolishness of childhood is no longer there, and the madness of youth is also gone. The miseries of old age, the illnesses, the limitations of old age are also gone. One is being freed from the body. A great joy arises from the innermost core and spreads all over. In the eyes of the real man dying, you can see a flame. That is not of this world. And in his face, you can see grandeur that is of the beyond. And you can feel the silence, the non-struggling silence, the non-resistant silence of the man who is slipping slowly, slowly into death with a deep gratitude and acceptance for all that life has given him and for all that existence has been so generous with. A gratitude surrounds him. You will find a totally different space around him. He will die as one should die. And he will release such freedom that those who are close by will simply be stoned on that freedom and will be transported. Now, it's I'm going to tell you something. That's exactly how it happened. I, I really, it's a, I don't even know how to say it. Exactly how he explained it. So he, Osho continues. He says, don't hate death. I know it is not only the questioner who hates death. It's almost everybody because we have been taught a very wrong philosophy. We have been told that death, death is against life. It is not. We have been told that death comes and destroys life. That is utter nonsense. Death comes and fulfills life. If your life has been beautiful, death beautifies it and to its ultimate. If your life has been a life of love, then death gives you maximum experience of love. If your life has been a life of meditation, then death will bring you the ultimate consciousness. Death only enhances, of course. If your life has been a wrong life, then death enhances that too. Death is a great magnifier. If you have lived only in anger, then in death you will see just hell inside you, just fire. And if you have lived in hatred, then death will magnify hatred. What can death do? Death magnifies it mirrors. But you are the culprit. Death is just mirroring the phenomenon. Don't hate death. Otherwise, you will miss death and you will miss life too. So, I, <laughs> yes, it's a little deep. I know this is a little deep today. I actually love this, but it's a little deep. So, he continues. How much time do I have? I got a couple minutes yet to continue Six here? Minutes or so. I think I can finish this. I think I can finish this, this part for the next time. So Osho continues. Don't hate the world as you have been told again and again in your past by so-called saints. Love life. Love this world. Because when you love, when, you're, when your love comes in to, to its total intensity, you will discover godliness here and now. It is hidden. It is hidden in the trees. It is hidden in the mountains. 
It is hidden in the rivers. It is hidden in the people. It is hidden in your wife, in your husband, in your children. If you hate life, if you hate the world and you escape from it, you are going away from godliness. Affirm life. Let your energies be focused on positive. The negative is not the way to live. Nobody can live in the negative. In the negative, people only commit suicide. All negatives are suicidal. Only affirmation, total affirmation, brings you to reality. You say, the strongest emotion I have is hating death. I want to kill it once and for all. You cannot do it. Nobody can do it. It's impossible. It is not in the nature of things. The day you were born, death became absolutely certain. Yes. Now, there is no avoiding it. Death can be dissolved only when you dissolve birth. You have already died. The day you were born, you died. Because in the very birth, death is determined. If you really want not to die again, then you will have to do something so that you are not born again. That is the whole Eastern approach, how not to be born again. There are ways not to be born again. If desire disappears, you will not be coming again. Now, I want to repeat that because that's stress mastery. If desire disappears, you will not be coming again. It is desire that brings you into the body. Desire is the glue that keeps you glued in the body. One body disappears and desire creates another body and so on and so forth. Dissolve desire so you will not need any birth. If birth disappears, death disappears on its own accord. Then there is life eternal, no birth, no death. So desires are the wants that make up the ego. That's what we teach. The wants of the ego is the desire energy. That's what the great religious teachers and masters have been teaching us. If you want to have freedom, let go of your wants, correct? Mm -hmm. So Osho continues, this is the greatest medicine, the medicine of no birth, no death. That is the taste of the whole Eastern approach, Eastern realization, Eastern insight. But remember, you cannot fight death. You cannot dissolve birth, then death is dissolved. But when what happens is that ordinarily we love birth, we love life. That's why we hate death. Now you are going into the impossibility and you will drive yourself crazy. You say, I want to kill it. If you really want to kill death, accept it. Accept it totally. And in this very acceptance, death disappears because you never really die. Only the ego dies. And if you accept death totally, you have renounced the ego on your own. Then there is nothing left for death to do. You have done its work on your own. What can death take from you? It will take your money. It will take your wife, your husband. It will take your relationships. It will take your world. Don't be attached to these things. Then what is left for death to take away from you? It will take your ego, your self-identity. The idea that I exist as a separate being, death will take it away. You can dissolve it. That's what meditation is all about. It's the conscious, voluntary decision. I will dissolve this ego. I will get rid of this ego. I will not cling to it. If you don't cling to the ego, what is left? You have died already. And, and only those who have died already conquer death and attain life abundant. So I could run on that for about an hour. <laughs> Same. I could go yeah. on that for about an hour. That was really, really deep because what he is saying is what we are doing. Stress mastery is about releasing your identity of who you were programmed to be the first seven years of your life. So he talked about children, correct? Mm -hmm. Children are not born with an identity. We give them an identity. The job as a parent is to break the will of the child so the child can fit in the tribe and the culture and survive. That's what our job is. So what we do, we screw the kid up. The kid is born right, we mess him up. But that's a survival response. Can't be shut off. You can't change it. It is what it is. So the idea is you that are listening to this have to take responsibility for you and understand the things that we're teaching you here. Because what we're teaching you is you are not 
your identity. And that was the whole thing that Osho was talking mm-hmm. about. The true death that you fear is the fear of the death of the ego. But I will tell you, the death of the ego will give you birth again. A birth that you will not be able to ever, ever get rid of. And that's kind of what enlightenment, well, that is what enlightenment is. David, I had to go off. Yeah, I was going to say, there's, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, if you think about just like the way that, um, if you've talked to anybody who has attempted suicide or anything like that, ask them what the moment before it was when they accepted that it was over, you know, and watch that piece because if they accepted it, the ego doesn't know that it failed. The ego thinks it's done. Like, this is it. And at that point, that's like complete peace. And that's like experiencing what death brings without dying. And that's the same thing that we want to do, well, you know, without having to attempt to kill ourselves or having a near-life experience. So Awakening like, Conne- Awaken Connections, Jeff Deppie is going to talk about his near-death experience. And he's going to explain this a little mm-hmm. bit. He's going to explain what it was like to be disconnected from his body for a while and what he was wandering through the halls. And he's going to tell you what it was like and you're going to be able to ask him questions for those that are coming to Orlando. Get ready because Awakened Connections is coming next week. Next, So next week, David, we're going to have Awakened Connections Week with Motivational Monday. We're going to talk about career. And each day, we're going to add one of the life categories in and we will bring us right up to the event. Anything else? That's all for me. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. And you can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. All emails from today's show goes to David at Living Right with Bill Cartwright. As always, until next time, stay inspired. Stay inspired.